particular convention will add immense value to our value delegates. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep sharing as this helps illuminating the minds. And I always remember Mario Robinson who said, nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending. So today, we sail on the tides to create a future. Thank you all. Welcome aboard TIE 66 Convention. Thank you. Sectors like banking, IT, manufacturing, and many others have been growing by leaps and bounds. The trade deficit is at all an all-time low. 1.2% of GDP and exports are remarkably high. The taxation system has improved, and collections are increasing every year. With all such factors in place, our great nation is destined to be the biggest economy in the world soon. According to the Asian Development Bank, the regional economy, which includes Southeast and East Asia, is back on track. Inflation is minimal and robust recovery is happening due to domestic demand and expansion of exports. I'd like to quote here the outcome of ADB's latest report. South Asian economies are expected to expand collectively by 7.0% in 2022 and 7.4% in 2023, with India, the sub-region's largest economy, expected to grow 7.5% this fiscal year and 8.0% next fiscal year. I, along with your support and inputs, have been drawing the attention of the Indian government through our various representations. And we've seen that uh, the support, what we saw in the video from all the ministers and ministries we've been working very closely with. That it is the time for us to have the most strategic development plan in terms of encashing the regional strength. Half the world lives in Asia, and with remarkable growth, if we can focus on working in tandem in the region, we can achieve a lot in terms of economy and tourism. Now is the time to focus on all three aspects of tourism, domestic, inbound, outbound, and many more. To do that, we have three strengths which are most critical to India. One, we are, the one we that I say is it all is people. We have the young, growing, affluent population. Two, with a P is the product. We are the most incomparable globally for all segments, leisure, business, mice, heritage, special interest. And the third is peace, which is the need of the R. We have everything in the region and we are to an extent dependent on each other as well in terms of meeting our domestic demand and consumption. Could be export imports and therefore the regional strategic tires are our future. For instance, Many of the companies owned and operated by the Indian businesses are headquartered in countries like Singapore, UAE, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia. It gives easy access to new markets while parallelly working together. I would not like to go into the stats of India or any other country's tourism because we all know that our sector has been the hardest hit. However, every dark cloud has a silver lining and every crisis does have an opportunity. So I would like to say that we have recovered and it's a lesson to have been remembered for generations to come. No point in comparing the last three years with pre-pandemic. However, I'm proud to say on a platform that the tourism fraternity worked very hard and has matched pre-COVID levels within no time. For instance, the period of ambiguity served as a form of encouragement for the advancement, innovation and digitalization of skill development initiatives in the Indian tourism domain. Several new e-learning platforms rose to popularity and existence. Digital learning took over the conventional way of education. Although it has quite a few, few benefits, it itself has no physical boundaries and allows everyone to learn and connect from the comforts of their homes. This proves the theory that survival of the fittest and is and has always been on the agenda of humanity. Be it the recovery of the tourism sector, 
or value addition in terms of facilitation of learning new skills. We, the Thai, have always been there to support the members. Thai 66 Cruising Convention is the first ever by the Travel and Tourism Association from India on a cruise and therefore will be a lifetime experience. We need to prepare ourselves to expect the unexpected. And to that, our sessions have been designed over the next two days along with a load of, load of fun and party. And, of, and therefore, I on behalf of Thai would like to initiate and emphasize the development of cruise tourism in India. A cruise is the best way to connect two nations and enhance regional cooperation. We are experiencing a new example of coming from a nation and then covering two destinations while enjoying every form of tourism on board. We believe India has the potential to become a home port to many international cruise liners, both on the west side and the east side of our magnificent coast of 7,000 kilometers and beyond. This will create the opportunity to create incredible tourism park, port infrastructure to cater to these massive ships in all our coastal states. That in turn will create capital investments, jobs, forex earnings and tax revenues so critical for India. And therefore, I am seeking the support and assistance of members to work together to promote cruising and regional tourism in India. Our idea has already been acknowledged and appreciated at various levels of the government. It is now for all of us to come forward and exploit the opportunity. It will indeed be a lifetime opportunity to promote tourism while parallelly expanding businesses. We have day topics of which we will take forward in our delegation today and tomorrow. Ocean of opportunities. We will be witnessing that now, where we will absorb the lifetime experiences from the best two ambassadors to see how we can imbibe the experiences into our lives. With the world going through multiple challenges, we are continuously at war and peace geopolitically, all in our minds, and also continuously developing and investing in tourism. We will also indulge in from, in from many experts what today a connected traveler is all about. The day two, we will be talking about the waves of change. We need to adapt to changes happening around us, especially in the region. Our scope of business can only go beyond borders if we utilize our combined strength. Nepal, Sri Lanka, Kazakhstan, Myanmar, Bhutan, Malaysia and other nations have evolved along with India. And the tourism industry is a lot interdependent on each other. So let's utilize this to the core and encash our regional strength. With this, I would once again like to welcome you all on the, on the 66th Thai's cruising experience. I request all of you to avail the opportunity to the maximum by way of learning, networking, exploring, connecting to situations and people beyond your existing tie-ups. I'm sure that the conven convention would be a gift for all travel trade professionals. On the occasion, Mr. P. Kumar Naidu, the ambassador of India in Singapore, addressed the August gathering, he said. I believe such events are particularly relevant today because we're finally turning a corner after a couple of difficult years in which connectivity had reduced, health challenges became overwhelming, and pandemic-related restrictions have made travel in ski costly and difficult. The travel tourism and hospitality industry, of course, is no stranger to turbulence. Uh, it is, of course, one of the most sensitive to local disturbances, such as law and order problems. Worse news coverage, terrorism, financial instability, ecological crises, pandemics, etc. But as we move towards a post COVID era, how the tourism industry performs will very much depend on how well businesses can adapt to the new normal, meet customer expectations, and adapt, adopt technology that can help provide better customer experiences. Significant shifts in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry have already happened because of digital disruption. Online models and disintermediated sectors of the industry can fundamentally change customer expectations and habits. In the post-pandemic era, I'm sure we will see another series of shifts again. We all know that India is one of the world's great reservoirs of history, culture, philosophy, religions, traditions, and natural beauty and bio biodiversity. We currently have 40 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and are ranked 34th on the World Travel and Tourism Index. The World Economic Forum ranks India as the fifth best destination on the Natural Heritage Index in the world. 
All these attributes serve to give visitors a warm and deeply enriching experience, placing India among the most desired destinations for tourists, tourists and pilgrims. As we all know, India resumed scheduled commercial international flights from 27th of March. The government of India restored the e-visa option for most countries to which this facility was available before the COVID-19 pandemic, with the exception of a very small number of countries. The COVID situation in India <coughs> and also the region has significantly improved today, supported by high levels of vaccination, despite the emergence of new variants and regular intervals. Our connectivity and occupancy levels are soon expected to match levels seen before the pandemic. The Indian tourism industry, like many others, has used the difficult pandemic years to further reflect upon and examine ways to improve the experience of global travelers while also ensuring health and safety. In 2011, over 11 million tourists in 2019, over 11 million tourists visited India. The potential for further growth is huge, given the diversity of our tourist destinations and offerings, the rapid upgradation in the last few years in transport and tourism infrastructure, digitalization, and the huge potential for foreign investors to invest in the tourism and hospitality sector in India. I've always believed that cruise tourism offers a big opportunity for India. We heard from previous speakers about it, given our long coastline of over 7,500 kilometers and the large number of islands which are part of our territory. This would, of course, require us to put in place enabling policies, expand berthing facilities for cruise ships, invest in passenger terminals of international standards and ports provide seaside access to key tourist places in coastal cities, set up the broader ecosystems at these places to welcome and entertain cruise tourists, and think of suitable tax incentives while also not losing sight of environmental concerns. I also feel that Indian tourism needs to take into account some new and emerging trends. Uh, some of these are the following. Nowadays, we hear of leisure travel, combining business and leisure. In fact, 60% of business travel incorporates elements of leisure, and it should be our effort to try and uh, combine the two so that uh, we can take advantage of both the segments. Digitalization, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this means uh, booking, inquiries, etc., are increasingly online and on mobile platforms. Advertising channels are also now different and increasingly digital. Many uh, tourist operators, uh, tourism enablers use uh, augmented reality and virtual reality technologies to get tourists interested in the destination. Uh, we should try and uh, get involved uh, in, in more ways uh, to try and take advantage of this trend. Sustainable tourism, we see tourists increasingly making sustainable travel choices uh, given their greater awareness of climate change issues and destinations therefore to position themselves accordingly using community welfare, carbon footprint and other similar information to appeal to customers. Uh, we also uh, witness uh, a trend of wellness holidays and nature retreats. Uh, there, are, uh, there is a lot of excitement and these are combined with organic, organic and uh, healthy food options, yoga, meditation, etc. We also hear of ethical tourism opportunities for local community welfare and, and symbiotic relationships. Uh, we hear more and more about experience tourism, uh, the attempt to try and give the tourists a once in a lifetime unique experience uh, or gaining an emotional connection with uh, one culture or the other. History tourism, of course, very well known. And uh, there is an increasing need to recognize that convenience, availability of well-curated information, ease of booking, and uh, satisfaction uh, in terms of affordable luxury are all key factors that influence the decisions of tourists. India needs to uh, try and 
However, last year, this is possible, and, and try and offer itself as an increasingly attractive destination. Uh, we also, uh, India has always been strong, and we also need to improve our strengths further uh, to offer immersive experiences such as cultural festivals, religious festivals, music festivals, etc. Uh, find ways to associate them to uh, tourist attractions and, and uh, make ourselves more and more attractive as a destination. Lastly, I feel that COVID control uh, and, and the record of various places in, in controlling uh, COVID and other uh, possible pandemics in the future may become a critical determinant of a destination's popularity. Uh, safety and health security in general, information and cleanliness, alerts, contactless options, etc. All these will increasingly become more and more uh, important as destinations offer themselves as uh, pandemic proof in the coming years. As far as India is concerned, we uh, have some uh, areas that we need to work on. Uh,